Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, I am excited. I took a trip to the Goodwill and I think I found a future masterpiece. Now, one thing I want to complain about is Goodwill is not what it used to be. I will tell you that. Their prices are like way out of control lately. I don't know what's going on, but I see like little tables from the 80s little glass tables they want like 40 bucks for it. it's like these places are there to help not to make a buck like that that's amazing but anyway that's my rant for the to hit today the reason why i bought it up is i found this little sculpture for 10 bucks which i gladly paid for it because i think it's going to be beautiful in the end it's in pristine condition and i'm hoping you can see that it is obviously a uh, geode made out of wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up all of this. I'm going to tape up the back. I'm going to figure out a way to, to fill in this hole. Or actually, I'm going to do this side. So this hole here. And although it's beautiful already... I am going to find a way to make it even more prettier. So let me get set up and I will be right back. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is figure out what I want to do. So I know I have to seal off the back, okay? Um, meaning tape it off. I'm not going to seal this. It feels like it's got a varnish on it already. And if it gives me a hard time, then I have to do multiple layers of resin anyway. So I'm not going to waste my time doing that. So first thing I'm going to do is tape off this back. And then I'm going to tape off these little poles just probably up to about here. Because I'm going to have it sit like this while I work on it. And I don't foresee any resin getting down here. Um... But I'm also going to dam the sides of it. Well, not dam it. I'm going to cover the sides because I want the sides to be that nice, natural wood when it's finished. And then afterwards, I could put a nice uh, gloss coat of varnish around the sides. But for now, we need to protect them. And sadly, all I have is quarter inch I believe this is no maybe half inch tape so all I'm going to do is I'm going to tape 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 trim with a pair of scissors actually I don't even have to trim it because I'm going to be doing the sides as well so it doesn't matter if it hangs over I just want to protect that back all right so I'm going to go all the way around this And I'll just fold it up onto the sides and then do the sides. Now, what I will do is I will, what you see me doing here, I will do it two times because I want it really, really protected. And even though you can take a tongue depressor and press this down really good, um, you still take a risk of getting some resin under that tape. Resin finds a way, trust me. Even when I tape it three times, it can still stain the wood. So um, I just like to try to do as much as I can to protect it. Now here I'll have to cut around here. To make it fit the right way but for now I'm just plopping it on and I'm gonna cover the entire back so I'm not gonna make you watch me this is about as exciting as watching paint dry so I will tape this then I will tape the sides and show you how I tape them and I will be right back one other thing I'd like to mention whenever you tape your piece you should use something that's hard this is a bone folder. 
uh, use to make score lines in greeting cards when you make your own greeting cards. I use this. You can use a tongue depressor, popsicle stick, or ruler, and just really, really push that down really, really hard, especially when you start doing your sides, okay? That's going to really help push that tape down onto your substrate and ensure, hopefully ensure that no resin seeps under. Okay, so I have the sides taped off really well, the back taped off, my little pieces here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dam the painting. So what damming means is you have a little, you take some tape, you go around the entire piece. You want to make sure it's the same amount. We're going to call what's hanging over the top. This here, the lip. You want to make sure that the lip is the same height all the way around the piece. So that if A, God forbid you, re you forget to remove the tape, your piece will be the same height all the way around as far as the edge goes. Um, and trust me, it will happen. I forgot to remove the tape so many times. So you just want to go around evenly like that. Okay, and then you're going to, again, burnish this all the way around till it's nice and sticky. Stuck on the piece, I mean. Okay, so now that my piece is wrapped up tighter than King Tut, I need to figure out a way to plug up this hole. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to use my epoxy sculpt. Um, it's a two part clay that has epoxy. It gets hard, um, self hardening, waterproof, permanent. And people will use this to make barriers in their geodes. Um, I'm sure there's other things that they do with it, but I just use it for the barriers usually. So what I'm going to do is just mix up a little wad of this um, and plug it down in here and maybe, just maybe, stick a few crystals in there, but I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm not sure on my design yet. Now, if... You want to see what this stuff looks like. I used it in two videos. I've used it in the 10 by 10 resin geode in a wooden box. And then I used it more recently in my black and gold geode. It's really cool stuff. I have a link for it below. All the products that I show you guys, whether they be resin pastes, pigments, uh, powders, stuff like this. I am not a paid endorser of these products. I'm just showing you what I use and what I like and what I think works good. Okay. I'm not telling you to run out and buy it, but I give you the option if you're interested in buying it. That's why I have the links below, but in no way, shape or form am I telling you to go run out and buy these things. I just like them. So I use them. This is the way that I do my art and it's only my way. There's hundreds, if not thousands of different ways to do things when it comes to art. So again, these are just things that I use that I think work well. I'm not endorsing them. Okay, here is an important tip when it comes to using epoxy sculpt. You need to have equal amounts of part A and B. Also, when you go to grab, you have to wear gloves because there is epoxy in it. So when you go to grab your pieces, okay, let's say you have gloves on. You could technically pull a piece out. But what happens when you pull out a piece of this and now you have it on your hands, okay? And then you go to reach into this bucket. 
you're contam cross contaminating. Therefore, you can get some of this into this and then ruin the whole batch. So take out a nice wad of it. Actually, I don't need that much. I'm going to do half of that size. Take out a wad of it. Get equal part of that. Okay. I even use a, another stick. This may be overkill. What I'll do is I use the other end of the stick. Maybe overkill, but this stuff is expensive and I don't want it to harden up on me in any areas. Wow. That didn't go as planned. So the, the, the good way to do this would be with a scale. But I'm too lazy to go get mine right now, so I'm going to eyeball it. I have a piece of wood in here from the stick that broke. You get that out of there. So a little bit more. And then all you have to do is knead it together in your hand. Just like so. Until it turns into one solid color. Which only takes a minute or so. If you have the right size gloves on. <laughs> Unlike me. You know, everything else on my on my body is big. Why couldn't these be too? <laughs> my hands. These. Then again, I don't want big hands. I want a big butt, not big hands. All right, so we're getting close here. I just wanted to show you how easy it was to mix that in there. And this will be good also to plug into that hole because it'll help my crystals if I decide to put something in there, which I feel like I kind of have to. Um, it will be something that they could stick into. So now that I have it mixed up, I'm going to take some chunks and just stick them down in there. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just needs to be in that hole. And I'm also going to um, try to push it down a little bit into the hole a little bit further so that I have a little bit of room to push my crystals down in. Let's see. But the main purpose was just to plug up that hole. Now, if I didn't want to put anything in there, I could always just let it dry and paint it. But then again, I'm going to be putting resin over this whole entire area, so I don't really need to paint it, do I? You're never going to see it. Some steps you just have to learn to cut out. They're just not necessary. Okay. So let me get my crystals. And then we'll be all set. Okay, so here's my private stash of crystals. Um, I like to use the jewelry ones that they sell. You can find a lot of cool things also on clearance. These here I used in a piece to make a geode and it came out beautiful. I'm not sure where it is right now or else I'll show you. Um, so... According to the colors I'm going to be doing, I need to either pick a crystal like this or a clear one like these here. So I'm going to pause you, make up my mind, and we will get going. Okay, so I pulled a few out. I'm going to go with this color here. I feel it'll match better with the colors I'm going to be using. And what I'm going to do 
It's just kind of, I'm going to take the end that has the hole for the necklace that it should be going on. And I'm going to disguise that into the clay. So, let me just like right here. Okay, and look how perfect that works to help them stand up. So I like to do little clusters of them. geodes are so interesting to look at and I'm, that's why a lot of other people make them too they're just such beautiful things find a spot there and then you just got to make sure that your epoxy sculpt is not coming out where it shouldn't be All right so I'm going to uh, mention the colors I'm using right now and then I'm going to mix them up and show you them so I'm going to be 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 I'm going to be using <laughs> a mixture. I'm going for some nice earthy tones, I feel. So I have saffron spice, Lorez. I have black cherry, Lorez. Sassy red, Lorez. Sunflower yellow, Lorez. Nemo Lorez and I need to make a oh I have a rich copper I want to use by Lorez and a I'm going to use angel white but I need to tan it up a little bit I want a nice tan creamy color and if I can't achieve that using the white with another maybe gold or some color like that then I will just go to um, acrylic paint but let me get that set up okay guys so I've omitted a couple of colors that I mentioned and added in two different ones so instead of using the sunflower yellow I'm going to be using some of this testers brand um, it's a cream color ivory. It's for model cars. It's an enamel paint. And then I'm going to use my one and only, only color obsession color that I own. I have to get some more of their stuff. Um, this is a beautiful color. It's called Fire Opal Orange. And um, yeah, so those, instead of using the... Saffron Spice and the Sunflower Yellow, I'm adding those two colors in. So let me just show you them quick. This is the Rich Copper. I'm at a different angle today and I feel like I'm out of whack here. Rich Copper. Black Cherry which is transparent, sassy red, Nemo, it's just your basic bright orange color. Here is the testers ivory color. And then this is the fire Opal Orange by Color Obsession. 
okay? So as you can see, my crystals are dried into that clay in there, and um, I taped everything off. You can see a pattern here in the wood, so I'm going to try to follow that by doing a puddle pour. And again, I did not prime this wood, so I'm hoping, you know, it's got cracks and, you know, the hole here. I'm hoping that it doesn't act up too bad, but if it does, I'm going to have to do a top coat anyway. So if I get those nasty air bubbles, I'll just cover them in the next layer. It doesn't matter. So let's see here. I think I'm going to start off with the Fire Opal Orange. And what I'm going to do is just a small little puddle pour. This is the Nemo. Then some of the ivory. Sassy red. The rich copper. And right on top of that, I want to try out the black cherry. Usually, these transparent colors on top of like a gold or a silver, um, copper in this case, they do some uh, special looking things. All right, now I'm just going to heat it really quick with a small torch. Just to heat it up. And then I'm going to start tilting it. Just a bit, just to get it up there. Bear with me one second here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is start another one. Let's see, right here. Um, let's do this.
right up against that table. And then a little more of the cream. Um, a little bit more of this. Oh, I can't believe I just did that. Totally drew over my orange line. I didn't want to do that. So what happens when you get excited?
okay and then copper And the black cherry. Okay. Now what I need to do is heat this up really good and tilt it around a little bit until I get to the shape that I like. So far, I'm not seeing any uh, crazy bubbles, but we'll see. See, and I'm getting some uh, cells from that enamel that will happen there's different things that you can get cells with besides buying <clears throat> epoxy paste and not all epoxy paste create cells either certain ones are just you know pretty okay so here we go just going to tilt it around until I see something I like, which is pretty much almost there. Yeah, I am digging that. That is pretty cool. I can already see though on the sides that there's going to be a little bit of staining. I think. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'm seeing things. Okay, so now the next step is to think about things like um, glitter. And do I want to add anything else to it? As far as color, I, I love the setup of it right now. I will say that. Yeah, I think, you know something? I really think I'm just going to leave it be. And uh, let it dry up. And then go on to the next step. But in the meantime, I do have a little resin left. So let me get a coaster or two. Okay, I got a couple. Well, I have this one color I want to try out that one of my subscribers sent me. It's a little sample of a color. And it looks so beautiful. It's like this deep purplish black color. I don't know if you can see that. I will show you once I put it in the resin. It's like really sexy. I don't know how much of it I need. So let me start with that. Oh yeah. We add this light too. This damn room is so dark all the time. You see that? It's 
Wow. I'm going to have to ask her. I believe the company was Color Tech. Well, it was for the other little sample she sent me, but that is a very beautiful color. I'm just trying to see if it's too light or not. I may have to add a little tiny bit more, which I hate to do because I don't want to use any more of it. I want to save it for a uh, pour, but yeah, just a little tiny bit more. So I was going to do coasters. I don't know if I said this already. I'm not paying attention. But I don't think I have enough to do coasters. So I'll just do one of my magnets. Plus I wanted to test out whether or not aluminum foil tape is okay to put on the back of these uh, Mac canvas magnets. This table is so not level right now. I'm balancing on top of stones cured in resin. i got to clean this like Peranto. All right, so here we go. Let's see what kind of color combination we could come up with here. This is going to be crazy. Purple and orange. Jeez. All right. Again, let's do a couple of uh, puddle pours. Wow, that color is fantastic. <gasps> I have to find out what that is. Holy cow. Wow. There's like a royal purple coming through. The dark, dark purple. That is pretty sexy. Right. I'm going to put some... Uh, Tan in there, or ivory, I should say. Well, when my hand goes over it and blocks the light, it turns to a uh, like violet color. It is gorgeous. Those two joined. Those two joined in matrimony, and the third one's about to come in. He's about to uh, start a life of polygamy. Multiple wives. <laughs> I know, I know. All right, let's hit it with some copper now. I mean, I kind of have to use all these colors to cover the surface. I don't have enough left. Let's see. Let's go this way. I still do not have any odd air bubbles on the piece of wood over here, so that's good. That's a plus. You know, I swear, when you do a, a piece of art like this, like you just start putting stuff down, um... no kind of thought behind it. These are the ones that turn out the best, I swear. And there's one thing that's certain with resin. It never, hardly ever turns out the way you want it to. Or the way you thought it would. It is a beast that cannot be tamed. Alright, so now I got that black cherry. I'm going to again go over the copper with it.
not. I'm going to need to put down a little bit of the oranges that I have. Oh, this is going to be a funky one. Hey, but you never know what works until you try it out. Purple and orange are not necessarily two colors. They really go. This orange, though, is more of a uh, coppery orange. It looks like almost to me. But now this next one I'm about to use is really orange. So <laughs> we'll use it for the outer part to give this stuff something to flow around. Because, of course, I had the most of this left. Okay, and a little bit of red. That's enough for now. I have a little bit of the purple reserved in case I need to do anything else. So I'm just going to heat it up quick and uh, see what we get. Trying to heat it up really good so I can swirl it around. You know, look at those cells, and that's from model paint. It's a unique piece of art, for sure. Make sure you get your sides even though there's barely any. 
still want to coat them good. Now I'm going to come back with that purple and do a little streaking and then I'll be done. I'll give you a close up. It's pretty cool looking. Definitely is different, that's for sure. All right, it's good enough. A little embellishment here and there, and should be good to go. Beautiful. That uh, purple is beautiful. Wow. I'm just uh, pulling my resin down here on this other piece. <clears throat> I gotta fix my little center here. Okay, so first things first. Here's this piece so far. Look at the uh, effects going on under there. Got some air bubbles I do have to pop. Trying to see if I could catch that. Over the, uh, the black cherry over the Copper, hold on. No lights in the way. Can't really see it too good. Oh, well, right here you can. See that? Beautiful that looks. It's really cool. So what I'm going to do is let that cure and then we'll come back and do the stones and the glitter and all that. And then here's this piece. Definitely different. Um, there's that color. You can see the uh, lighter color popping through. It's definitely a beautiful color. All right, guys, I've tortured you enough. We'll be back for the next part. Okay, so I have the flash on just so you can see uh, the colors that I'm working with here. I have some really cool effects going on in this. Um, but anyway, what I want to try to do next while this is still 
tacky is I want to try to put some stones around the center there and I want to try to match the color of these crystals yet I don't want to use bigger crystals like that in the center so what I'm going to try to do is see if these little uh, I guess you call them crystals they aren't stones they're like little rhinestones I want to see if they will take alcohol ink and I want to try to use like a very light brown alcohol ink and then some gold um, alcohol ink. So I'm going to set up and I'm going to leave the flash on so that we could see like the true color of it. Okay. Only because it's so dark in my room, even with the light on, there's shadows and stuff. So I'll leave the flash on. Okay. So I have a color called latte and then the gold mixative so I'm gonna put some of these little rhinestones in the cup and then I'm also going to add some diamond dust now once you mix this together and get them coated you have to separate them or spread them out on a paper plate or a paper towel to dry or else it'll be clumpy they'll all clump and dry together so look how pretty that is huh love that stuff be careful with this it could be very sharp so I have them both in there and a little bit more. What I do is if I don't use all of this, I will save it. I'll put it in a little plastic baggie and put them to the side if I ever do a color like this again. Now I've never tested to see whether or not these types of rhinestone thingies will accept alcohol ink. So we're gonna test this out together here. Get a stick mix them around with it doesn't take much a couple of drops of each color I want to add more of the latte though than the gold because uh, gold will take over and the golds you have to shake really well because they do settle So let me give that a mix around. Now the diamond dust, I know it will color, but I wasn't sure about these. And it doesn't, well, it looks like it's taken it a little bit. So let me add a couple of more drops. You see how we're getting that nice color? Very simple. I think I'm gonna add one, two, three, four, five. Five more drops of that. Two more drops of the gold. So very pretty. Okay, and I may go a little bit darker with the brown here. Hold on a second. I got a three pack of browns. So the next one up would be caramel. See, they cut this set came in a three pack. You can see the colors, they go up in shades. So I'm going to try the middle one, which is the caramel. That one may be too light. 
So I put four more drafts in. It's getting a little bit better. That was seven. All right, that looks good now. I'm going to add one more drop of gold. Or I should say three more drops of gold just to give it that nice shimmer. And now what I'll do is I'll let them dry off for about an hour. Very pretty color. And it will match with my crystals now. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is make a concoction. So I have a cup here. I have my crystals all dried. So I'm going to carefully dump them in there. And to those, I'm going to add some of my mica flakes. Pretty mica flakes, gold. I'm going to add some glitter. And then I'm going to give it all a mix around. And that is what I'm going to be using for my uh, stones. I just mix it around, blend it all together. So now we have a pretty mixture. And as a matter of fact, I will even put some glitter in there. Let's see. I have so much glitter here, it's hard to decide which one I want to use. Here, let me put you on pause a second. Okay, I have this pretty glitter here that's called sand. This was part of a kit made by the company called Moxie and I found M-O-X-Y and I found it at uh, AC Moore. They have the most beautiful colors of glitter. These bigger bottles are them also. Look at that. Oh, that one's kind of hard to see. It's so dirty. And they have unique colors too. That's a really pretty color. So they sell these kits that have, you know, 24 of the smaller ones in them. So I'm going to use the one called sand. Put a bunch of that in there. The more glitter, the better. If you don't look like you just left the strip club, you're not doing it right. So we'll mix that all in. Get a nice blend that matches. Okay. And now I'm going to add it. Okay, so my goal is to go around the center here and into this white area and into our tan and down through here. Very carefully which may be a problem for me. Let's see how I do it. My 
fingers first. I may have to get a uh, little spoon here. Let me try this little wooden spoon first. Well, there was one rolling off on me. One thing I bought at the dollar store that I was really not happy with are tweezers. They are just horrible to work with. Yeah, I'm not going to give a chance. I'll get my good ones. Now and hopefully it's going to get stuck on me. That's going to be a hole I'll have to fix. This is why I like to do this part after it's dry so that I don't risk sticking my finger in it or making a mess like this. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Be very, very careful. All right, so I'm going to go all the way around and then come up through here with this. I won't make you watch all of it. That would be quite boring, and I have to pick out another one now. So I will pause you until I'm done. Okay, so I have it all put down. And what I like to do is go around with my finger and just press down on areas where I know I'm not going to be touching wet resin just to kind of get it in there good. And then what I'll do tomorrow is when it's all cured, I'll come and tip this over and get rid of any loose ones that are there. So what I'm going to do next is just add a little more of this glitter on top of everything here to make sure it really pops. Just a little tiny bit. And then we're going to put it to bed for the night. And then tomorrow we could come in and do the top coat or actually do the, the lines if I want to put lines in it, which I will be doing. Just some a few lines with the mar paint marker. And then uh, do the top coat. Now, I decided to leave the tape on. So this way when I pull it off tomorrow, there will be a ledge. Okay. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to sand just to round the edge. So when I do the top coat, it will pour over nicely and coat the sides for me. So I will do all of that with you. But I'm really loving this. Over here, a lot of the transparent uh, black cherry ended up. And you can see those splits that were in the wood, and it looks really, really cool. So... Stay tuned for the next part. Okay, guys, so here's what we have so far. I'm going to try to keep this at an angle to where the uh, light above doesn't glare off of it. But we got some really cool effects that happened. And I love how you can see the splits in the lag. You know, silly little things like that that make me happy. <laughs> so anyway, we got to move on to the next step. So 
I removed 99.9% .9 of the tape on the inside, but you can see I still got some resin uh, that leaked through. So I got some tape I got to get off of there. That little chunk that you see right here. You have to get that off. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is make a mixture for the center so it looks like there's stones in there also. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, here are the sides. So they stayed pretty clean. I still have a little tape to get off of there. But there was some staining that got through, so I will be addressing that later in the video. But first, let me show you how to fix the center. Okay, so I have a piece of cardboard in front of you. What I'm going to do is make my own custom mica flake paste that has the same mixture that I used in the center of the geode. So... The first thing I need would be a um, oh lordy, palette knife. Aha, palette knife, palette knife. All right, then you're gonna need some matte gel. Now you can do this with heavy gloss gel also. I prefer to use matte gel because I feel like anytime I use any product, no matter what it is, that has a gloss in it, I feel like sometimes the resin doesn't like it. It tries to reject it because after all, there is something in that product that makes it shiny. So I try to stick to matte products no matter what they are. So matte gel, you can get it at your hobby stores. You can get it on... Amazon. I think I have a link to it. It's a very thick glue-like substance. You can use it uh, as a glue. You can use it for stenciling in art journaling or on projects. Um, there's multiple uses, but for today's purpose, I'm going to use it to make a nice paste for the center of my geode. To attach those crystals now when this dries it dries clear so all you're gonna see in the end are the bling blings now the only thing is is I used alcohol inks in these stones to color them so I'm a little nervous as to whether or not it's going to bleed but we shall see right let's test it out I'm going to put a boatload of gems in there, on there. Gems, mica flakes, glitter, everything you saw me mixing it to begin with. And I'm just gonna start combining it to make a paste. So far we have no bleeding, so that's a good thing. Just mix it up really good. I could probably add a little bit more. Technically, I could add a lot more, but I really don't need it. I apologize if the camera is bouncing. I have it located right on the table above this so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so now we have our paste. I'm going to move that to the side and get our geode back in view. And I don't need to balance this or anything for this part. Now you see there's some little tape marks there I can't get off. Doesn't matter, you're not gonna be able to see it in the end. 
in the end it's going to be covered with all of this now for the purpose of the video I have to keep it like this but when you're trying to do this get it in a position where you can really get in there and work on it so what I'm going to do is coat this entire thing and when it when it dries it's going to look like this but on the inside a really nice thick coating okay and I'm not going to make you watch all of it just be careful not to drop it onto your project and ruin the surface. Okay, so just plaster it in there, let it dry overnight at least, I would say um, 24 hours. And then uh, once that's dry, come back for the next step. Okay, so everything is dried up uh, my paste, you can see, dried nicely in the center. So the next step is to just do a top coat only in this top area. I'm not going to go down the sides yet. What I want to do is add a layer of clear and some more crystals just around this area here. So I mixed up. 150 milliliters of resin, which equals five ounces. And I'm just going to carefully pour it on there. The main area I'm concerned about is the center. I want to coat the inner part of the circle. I want to let it drip down. I have the tape underneath of the piece still, so this will be okay if it goes underneath it. It's just the sides I don't have taped. But if I do happen to get some resin on those sides, I can uh, sand it off until I'm ready to have resin on the sides. So I'm just going to carefully coat that inner part here. Just let it kind of ooze down. And I got that. So now I'm going to go around here. All right, and then with another step, I'm just going to coax it where it needs to go. So I'm going to bring it right up to that. There's a little tiny lip here from the tape that I left on. I wasn't planning on leaving on the tape, but I did, so... I'm thinking though by the time I'm done with the top coat and everything it'll all be level because it's really not that big of a lip few loose ones there. All right, so as you can see, I'm just kind of spreading it around. And I want the resin to thicken up just a little bit before I add those, the last uh, bit of crystals. So I don't want it to flow outward. So what I'm going to do is finish doing this part off camera. 
and then when it's time to add them on I will bring you back in okay so I've let it sit for a while what I'm going to do is just come back in with my cup of bling bling <laughs> and just start adding it back where I wanted it just want to cover up that center a little bit where you see the little bit of a lip that I had created by having taped there nope. nothing like dropping half of it onto the table it's kind of hard from this angle All right, so I'm gonna let this cure up and then I'll come back for the final step. Which, by the way, when I come back, the sides are gonna be painted. I don't need to sand them. I'm just gonna go over them with, I'm thinking, some gold basic, basic Liquitex. Oh, wow. Liquitex Basics because I did get some drips of red down the side and uh, it's so cold outside to send my hubby out there to sand would be cruel. But um, I'm thinking I'm going to paint them gold. If I don't, maybe I'll have him try to sand it off. And if he can get it off, I'll leave it. But when I come back, one or the other will be done to the sides. They'll either, either be wood or they'll be gold. All right, so last step. What I ended up doing on the sides was I took some of that um, glitterific paint. And I'm gonna show you it right now. And I basically took a piece of a sponge and, sorry, here it is right here. Full cart glitterific paint. It claims it's an acrylic paint. I don't know though. It feels like it's <clears throat> almost like a glitter glue, but it claims it's a acrylic paint. So I don't know. I'm gonna test it out in some resin to see if it works or not. But anyway, so I took both of these colors and just dabbed them on with a sponge and let them dry. So now I need to do my top coat, which I'm going to be using the fantastic stone coat. Sorry, I had to grab something there. Stone coat, quick coat. You mix equal parts of this with this. Mix it up just like regular resin. You have 15 minutes to work with it. So it's a fast curing resin. I have a code below the, in the description if you're interested in ordering anything from Stone Coat. It's $10 off $100. Uh, the code is KITTY10, all caps, one word. Um, this sets really fast. It's a fast curing resin. So what I'm going to do is mix it up. We're going to pour it on together and then... Within about two hours, two to three hours, I should be able to pick this up and show it to you. It cures that fast. Now, it doesn't fully cure, but it cures to where you could touch it. Now, stupid me, last night when I was moving this around, before the last coat I put on, I went to go move it, and it wasn't cured. So I got a nice thumbprint in there. So I had to just sand that down in a little spot over here, but you won't see that once I do the top coat. So let me mix this up and I will be right back. Okay, so I taped the back off and I put some tape right here so it doesn't get on the poles. But now I wanna explain something very important to you about this quick coat, stone coat. Because it is a fast curing resin, once it's mixed, you need, if you're gonna use this with colorants, you need to have those colors already mixed are already put into their cups, individual cups, with the stick in there. And 
you don't want to leave like let's say you have three colors you don't want to pour a little bit in mix your first color you want to get the large amount separated right away because the longer you let it sit in here if i let this sit just like this for five minutes it's going to start smoking and turn to a yellow brick it's a fast curing resin when it's when it you have 15 minutes to work with it but when you let it sit in larger amounts like this, just like with regular resin, uh, regular uh, stone coat, art resin, any of the other resins, if you leave them in larger amounts like this, they even heat up quicker. But this is a fast setting resin. So you have 15 minutes to work with it. If you leave it in a cup like this for five minutes, it's going to start heating up extremely fast and probably be ruined on you. So if you make a large amount, take it and separate it into smaller amounts. And then, you know, you could pour them into your, or put your colors in or have them prepared ahead of time. So I'm all mixed up here and I'm gonna scrape my stick one more time. Now this is the second cup I'm mixing in because my other cup was kind of smaller and I wanted to make sure that it was all mixed together and I always go down the sides especially the first cup I do this like throughout the whole mixing process to make sure that it's all incorporated so here we go I'm going to do the top and the sides so I'm going to just start pouring it on Resin is pretty cool, like my thumbprint, or if you, you sand it for some reason, you know, you get a ton of scratches on there, but then once you add the next top coat on, um, the next layer of resin, you can't even see it. It's pretty cool how it covers up stuff like that. Just going to get in here. And now I'm going to go right around the edges. It's going to start flowing over. And then with a gloved hand, I will go around and coat the sides nice. I love this stuff because, especially for this right here, because you don't have to wait all that time to be able to move it. Get that inner two inner portion Get a nice hefty coat I can't use this for anything else because like I said it's I only have 15 minutes to work with it and I don't have anything set up so just get my gloves on I'm going to pause you guys and move you before I get my tripod leg. Actually, I might be all right. Thought the resin was going that way, but it doesn't look like it is. All right, so here we go. It's going to smooth it over
people always ask about edges. And um, personally, I think if you don't like to fuss with your edges and you want just a nice clean edge, you don't want to have to go through sanding and all that, no matter what you're working on, a canvas, a piece of wood, tape off your sides. Tape them off really good. Go around the sides maybe two, three times with the tape. Press it down nice and tight so the resin can't get under it. Um, obviously, well, I should say before you do that, paint your sides a coordinating color. Or you could wait until after to um, but tape those sides up, do your piece. When you're done, before you do your top coat, either paint your sides, remove the tape, paint your sides, and um, pour the top coat over and you'll have nice painted sides that are nice and uh, perfect. Because if you tape them, the resin is not gonna go underneath It'll flow over, and then when you rip the tape off, it'll just rip the, the drips of resin off. Then you don't have to worry about sanding and doing all this and that. Just tape them off all the way. That's the easiest thing to do. All right, so we are coated. And what I'm going to do is I have some left here, so I'm just going to drizzle it. Use it up. Make sure I get this center good. And I'll go around again one more time. I mixed up way too much but it was the end of the bottle and I wouldn't have enough to do anything. Well, I guess I would have had a little bit to do something, but this time I, I have to order some more now. I'm running out of everything all at once and that's usually how it goes for me <laughs> and probably all of you too. Just see, I can't wait to show the, it looks like chunks of paint under here from the depth, but it's not. All right, so now we torch. Sides too. And then I'm going to bring you back so you can see the finished piece. be back all right guys it's time for the big reveal I have you in the dark so we can see the sparkle she is really gonna dazzle out in the Sun now the resin you can see I also put let's see if I can get it to show up the last layer before, actually, not the top layer that you just saw me do, the layer before that, I sprinkled a little tiny bit of gold just on top of the wet resin, gold glitter, so you can see it sparkling in some spots there. But anyway, I turned... That ugly wood statue into something beautiful, if you ask me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. And I want to wish you all a great day, great night. Happy pouring.